I'm a little shocked that you would criticize my mother-in-law. If you're not working, why don't you get out of here? My sister-in-law and mother-in-law, who did not know that I was taking over my mother-in-law's debt, threw these words at me without the slightest sense of gratitude. Yes, I understand. But it's up to you guys from now on. The day I packed my bags, they realized a fact I had been hiding and put their heads together. My name is Emma. I am 32 years old, a busy career woman working in an office in the city. When I was a student, I spent most of my time in the corner of the library absorbed in my books. After I got a job, I was buried under a mountain of work and forgot to take time for myself. One of my friends, who sincerely cared about me, said, Emma, why don't you try to cherish your love life a little? And she organized a group blind date for me. Then, a man whose eyes met mine was John, who worked in a building in the city center. He is a fresh salary man working in a building in the city center. And to my surprise, he seemed to be a little interested in me. I was nervous about the feeling of dating after a long time, but supported by his kind words, we gradually opened our hearts to each other. Then he made a gentle confession to me, and our love accelerated. Only one year later, we decided to get married. It was like a dream come true that I, who had been so absorbed in my work, could stand at such a wonderful turning point in my life. My friend who organized the group line date was also surprised at our sudden development. She said, oh, really? You're getting married? I said, yeah, it's amazing, isn't it? But it's great. I'm so glad I organized that group line date. Thank you. I really appreciate it. I'm looking forward to the wedding. I'm looking forward to it. Thus, I was to open the door to a new life. First, we reported to each other's families. Seeing me so happy, my parents welcomed him warmly. Emma, you haven't told me about your boyfriend for a long time, so I was a little worried that maybe you wouldn't get married. John, please take care of her from now on. When I heard these words, I felt as if I realized for the first time what my parents really thought of me. I realized that parents think a lot of things without saying them. My family had been basically free to do whatever I wanted, so there was no pressure to get married. But it seems that in my parents' mind, there was a wish to see their daughter happily married someday. Knowing such a parent's wish made my heart warm a little. And when I visited John's house for the first time, I met his family with nervous excitement. But his mother and father were both very warm and made me feel very safe. Next, we had dinner with the whole family. While I was looking forward to it, I was also a little nervous. Especially because I had heard that John's sister, Melissa, was there. She was only 25 years old, and her choice of words was a little rough at times, which made me a little confused. She asked me, Emma, you're already at that age, weren't you getting married too late? I was a little shocked to hear her say things like, I would have decided sooner if I were you. But John followed up and we had a nice dinner afterwards. We then planned our wedding and had a happy wedding at a place we loved. We had a lot of friends and family there, and the day was really great. Our honeymoon was so much fun, and when we returned home, we started our new life together. Life together was fresh, and every day was so much fun. We went out on dates and watched movies at home. I felt that newlyweds are really happy. It has been about two years since we got married. One day, our peaceful everyday life changed drastically. We received the news that my father-in-law had passed away. Of course, I knew he had health problems, but I had not expected him to pass away so soon. My husband and I were deeply saddened by this sudden news. My mother-in-law's grief was especially deep, and I could feel her emotions as I looked at her. But our surprise was compounded by what we subsequently found out. In fact, my mother-in-law was in deep debt. It was apparently due to the fact that she had been cheated by some unscrupulous person and lost a large sum of money. When we learned of this fact, we could only gape. My husband, with his usual gentle nature, said he wanted to help her somehow. 
So, we decided to use our shared savings to reduce my mother-in-law's debt as much as possible. I thought it would be too hard for her to bear that heavy debt alone after my father-in-law's death. However, my mother-in-law's reaction was a little unexpected. She said something like, if I am in trouble again, can I ask John for help? My husband was a little surprised and replied, that's a little. My mother-in-law said something positive, but I'll find a way to get more money somehow. But my husband was worried. I hope that's not gambling. We kept a watchful eye on my mother-in-law and were on the lookout for any trouble she might get herself into again. In the midst of all this, my husband was suddenly injured and had to be hospitalized. That event also became a big ordeal for my husband and me. Since every day was spent flitting back and forth from the hospital to take care of my husband, I never noticed any changes in my mother-in-law's daily routine. Then one day, after my husband was discharged from the hospital, I decided to pay a little visit to his parents' home. During our first reunion in a long time, I could sense that something had changed in the atmosphere. Mom, long time no see. My husband greeted her with a smile, and my mother-in-law said, John, you are getting better. Can you run again? She smiled at him and said. While smiling at this exchange, my husband began to flip through my mother-in-law's bank book. To his surprise, the money in his mother-in-law's bank book, which we had accumulated after her previous debts had been repaid, was almost completely gone. What's wrong with this bank book, mother? My husband exclaimed in surprise, to which his mother-in-law replied with a slightly embarrassed smile, you know, I had tea with friends and found a nice little bag. And then I found myself in this mess. She laughed bitterly. With that one word, my husband and I froze in complete surprise. It was as if we had saved money for our mother-in-law's future and she had spent it happily without a care in the world. My husband couldn't help but say, Mom, you shouldn't spend it like this. Do you know how much we put our hearts into giving you money for your future? He said something like that. Seeing my mother-in-law's remorse, we became truly concerned about her future. We suggested that she move in with us to support her life closer to us. When we broached the subject, my mother-in-law's eyes lit up with joy, and she gave up her house and moved into our apartment. Our new shared life together began, and my mother-in-law seemed to enjoy every day of it. The three of us laughed and talked around the table at every meal, and my mother-in-law volunteered to help with the housework, which made life surprisingly easy for both of us. Her upbeat mood was infectious, and our days became brighter and warmer. I said, Mom, what would you like for lunch today? Hum, I think I'll have you then. That sounds good. Since I was working remotely, I was in a position to monitor how my mother-in-law spent her money. Since we, my husband and I, provided her living expenses and my husband managed my mother-in-law's account, there was supposed to be no worry about her spending excessive money. However, we kept a close eye on her, worried that she might spend the money in some way. These days continued and in no time at all, six months passed. One afternoon, while we were relaxing in the living room, the intercom rang. We wondered who it was, and when I answered, I found my sister-in-law, Melissa, standing there. I said, Melissa, it's been a while. Is my mother there? I was a little surprised to hear her ask such a question without even saying hello, but I showed her into the living room. Mom, it's been a while. Oh, Melissa, what brings you here? I just wanted to see your face once in a while. Thanks, I'm glad you're here. How are you? Of course. I'm fine. John is with me. So, do you want to go to lunch with me? Sure, let's go. Melissa must have taken my mother-in-law to a restaurant or something. We decided to wait at home. When they came home in the evening, we looked at them and their faces changed. Then Melissa said, Emma, you are tormenting my mother, aren't you? I was surprised and could not understand what she was saying. My mother-in-law also looked at me sternly. My husband said, what are you talking about? There is no way Emma would do such a thing. He immediately took my side, but Melissa would not budge. John is being deceived too. 
Mom says she can't go outside and she hears Emma is saying things inside the house. We could only be amazed. Indeed, there were times when my mother-in-law would ask to go shopping and we would refuse because she would waste money. Also, my mom said you were taking her money. I had to admit that this statement surprised me. Did my mother-in-law think so or did Melissa blow it that way? In any case, it seemed that Melissa and my mother-in-law had joined together in accusing me. Now, what do you want from me? I was about to feel like I was bewitched by a fox. What on earth did they want to tell me? I wondered if they just wanted to say something to me. At that moment, my sister-in-law said something I never thought she would say. She said, I want you to leave our house. I feel like my mother can't really live happily with you. Because I can't believe you treat my mother-in-law so coldly. Her face clouded over. My mother-in-law looked as if she wanted to say something and turned to me. If you were gone, I would be able to relax and enjoy my time with John and Melissa. I was surprised by her words, but I could not say anything. In fact, they did not know that I had previously paid off her debts for my mother-in-law by cutting into my savings. Looking back, I probably should have made it clear to them at the time that I had not taken it out as our marital savings, but as my own. When I looked at my husband's face, he looked very angry. His hands were clenched and his body was shaking a little. Melissa said, my mother and I are going to live here together from now on. So, I want you to leave, my sister-in-law said again. Taking a deep breath for a moment, I answered my sister-in-law, I understand, but I won't get involved in what happens next. After that exchange, my husband and I decided to leave the house. And on the day we moved out, they were surprised to discover one truth. Looks like you've made arrangements to move out right away after all. Yes, I have something to tell Melissa. Yes, what is it? My husband chuckled and said, Actually, you know, I'm getting older and I was thinking that I should put the house in Melissa's name. My sister-in-law's eyes sparkled and she said, Really? It's going to be my house? She said excitedly. My husband quietly produced the documents for the change of name and said, As long as you sign here, that's all right. My sister-in-law happily said, I can't believe I have my own apartment. And signed it. My husband and I looked at each other stealthily and exchanged smiles at the success of our plan. Well, it's time to start getting ready to leave. What John, are you really leaving? Yes, I've decided to leave too. Oh, even John is leaving? Do you really have to leave with Emma? If I'm not with Emma, I don't feel comfortable either. It's normal for married couples to be together. I knew you would say that, but then what are we going to do about future house expenses and stuff? That's something you'll have to devise and pay for on your own. Wait a minute. I quit my job because I believed you would support me, okay? My husband and I could not hide our surprise at my sister-in-law's sudden statement. If you keep this up, you're going to get me and our mother into a lot of trouble. That's fine if you can devise a way to live on your own. You have our mother's pension, and if you save a little, you can manage. Yes, and if you add my pension to that, we can manage. Since you're going to live here, we need to be creative about it. My sister-in-law looked a little satisfied with my mother-in-law's kind words. Indeed. It's my new home. If I save a little money, I should be able to get by. However, my husband and I laughed inwardly at my sister-in-law saying such a thing, not knowing that the property was a rental. About that time, the movers arrived. We welcomed them and began to move more and more stuff out. My sister-in-law and mother-in-law rolled their eyes at the sight. What are you doing? Getting ready to move out. Are you taking everything? Of course. We bought all this stuff. Do I have to buy everything new? That's right. I wish you had known that and acted accordingly. Well, we better get going. My husband smiled and said and we left the house. My mother-in-law and sister-in-law froze in amazement for a while. After a while, my sister-in-law called my husband's cell phone. She said, hey John, what's with the rent bill all of a sudden? I was a little mistaken. 
Could it be that I am not the owner of this house? Who told you about that? Well, I'm actually renting this house. The document you signed at that time, which was the rental agreement. So, it's only natural that you should be charged for the rent. Seriously? I didn't know that at all. It's where you live, so you have to pay the rent. But my salary is not that much compared to you. You may laugh, but Emma actually makes more money than I do. Oh, no. It's true. She is working hard at a remote company that pays pretty well. That's why we were able to live so comfortably in that apartment. My sister-in-law was so surprised that she was speechless for a while. Next, I heard my mother-in-law's worried voice. We're so sorry, she said. I'm really sorry. Could you please reconsider and come back? My husband responded gently but firmly. Thank you, mother. But it's hard for me to go back because of your attitude toward Emma. She is the most important to me. Please take care of the rest. You will take care of it. After that exchange, I heard various rumors. My sister-in-law and mother-in-law had apparently been forced to look for an apartment after getting tripped up on rent payments. They are now trying to make do in a small apartment that is barely big enough for the two of them to live in, but it is said that they are having financial problems and occasional fights. They are also concerned about the neighbor's eyes on them. John and I have started a new life in our new house. Every day is fun and full of happiness. My name is Kristen. Despite being raised in a family that was far from wealthy, I managed to secure a job and get married through hard work. My husband, Matt, is an employee at a luxury hotel. I believed that Matt and I would live a happily married life. However, I never expected what ended up happening to me. I grew up poorer than the average family, but I never blamed my parents. Ignoring their own desires, they spent time taking me out and taught me about the local culture. Maybe they loved geography, but as a child, I worried they were overextending themselves. While I was grateful for my parents' efforts, I didn't want to be a burden. Therefore, I had decided to start working after graduating from middle school. My mother, thinking of my employment, advised, it would be better to go to high school for your future. My father also supported me, saying we have enough money to cover your high school. I was happy my parents felt that way, but my desire to let them relax as soon as possible was stronger. Don't worry, if I start working early in life, I learn more quickly. I said, without knowing if that would be true. The reality is, there was no guarantee of finding a job. At that time, however, I had a foreign friend who had moved from overseas when I was just starting middle school. Her name was Maya, and like me, her family was not wealthy. The commonality quickly brought us together, and we gradually became closer. Maya could speak a little English, so we managed to communicate. I naturally learned Spanish through my conversations with her. By the time I was in my third year of middle school, I could converse fairly well in Spanish. Even though I had only completed middle school, a travel agency decided to hire me because of my language skills. They valued my ability to speak Spanish. Meyer also started working after graduating from middle school, and we didn't contact each other as often as we used to. Once I got a job, I worked very hard. I was desperate to earn an income, and soon, I turned 26. Around that time, there was a lounge in the luxury hotel I often used for work. It was comfortable, with casual meals and a cafe-style menu with reasonable prices. My colleagues and I often had meetings there. Matt was a waiter working in that lounge. The hotel had many guests from overseas, so Matt also spoke Spanish. I also sometimes dealt with foreign clients. Because we both could speak Spanish, Matt and I had a lot in common and felt a mutual attraction to each other. Matt approached me and we started dating, leading quite smoothly to marriage. I never imagined that a girl from a Pua family like me would get married. I feel moved just thinking about it. Anyway, I was looking forward to the new and enjoyable life that was about to begin. But an unexpected situation awaited me. Before the marriage, Matt made a proposal. 
If you're okay with it, I'd like to live together at my parents' house. The reason behind this was that Matt had lost his father a few years ago and was worried about his mother living alone. His mother's health had started to wane, so she needed someone to watch over her. At that time, I was a teleworker who could do most of my work from home, so I could take care of my mother-in-law and also take care of the household chores. On the other hand, Matt himself often worked long hours, meaning he spent limited time at home. He rarely had days off, so it seemed convenient for him to have me, the teleworker, around. However, I couldn't just say yes to him. That was because when I met Matt's mother before the marriage, she gave me the silent treatment after hearing about my educational background. Which university did Kristen graduate from? She asked. I replied honestly, actually, I didn't go to college. I started working right after graduating from middle school. My mother-in-law just stared at me for a while and then fell silent. From her expression, I could clearly feel her disdain for me. Ah, uh, you only went to middle school? Well, she said, looking down on me with that gaze. From that experience, I felt that living with my mother-in-law would not go well. I conveyed this indirectly to Matt. I feel like your mother doesn't like me much. You feel like my mom is cold towards you? That can't be. She trusts me. And she would never think badly of the wife I chose, he said, laughing it off. I wondered if I was overthinking things. Matt also promised to talk to his mother if there were any problems. Trusting him, I agreed to live with my mother-in-law. However, once we started living together, I was unable to build a good relationship with her, and I faced the gap between my ideal and reality. When Matt was around, his mother always greeted him with a warm smile, saying, Matt, thank you for living with us. I really appreciate it. Matt would reply, of course. I thought it would make things easier for you. But her attitude towards me was completely different and terribly distant. She would say to me with little expression, as if giving orders to a servant, Kristen, make sure you support Matt. Don't be a burden. It seemed like my mother-in-law was belittling me. But at that particular moment, Matt defended me, saying, It's no problem. Kristen is doing her job well in her field. I did not miss the frown that comment brought to my mother-in-law's face. I decided to consult Matt if any problems arose in the future and to handle things in my own way. I thought living together would help us understand each other better. I didn't want our relationship as a family to become strange. With such hopes, we started living together but it often didn't go so smoothly. One day, as I was working on my computer, my mother-in-law suddenly entered the room and demanded irritably, Kristen, when will you clean my room? Make sure it's done by 10 a.m. every day. I was puzzled by this sudden demand. We had never discussed such rules or agreed on the extent of my household chores. I thought that if she had explained things as such nicely from the start, I might have understood. I wasn't always available due to my job, but thinking it childish to argue on the spot, I paused my work and replied, understood, I'll start right away, and began cleaning her room. Even at that time, my mother-in-law was often doing nothing but relaxing in the living room, watching TV, and enjoying snacks. Although Matt was concerned about his mother's health, she seemed capable of cleaning the room by herself. I had thought she might be too frail to move but she appeared quite energetic. After I finished cleaning, she said, now that you're done, I'm counting on you to prepare dinner. I prefer light seasoning, so no heavy flavors. And as if giving orders, she even asked me to go grocery shopping. Although I thought it was too early to start preparing, I decided to get it over with before returning to my work. Upon returning from shopping, as expected, my mother-in-law was leisurely spending time in the living room. I felt irritated by the sight, but decided to put up with it and just follow her instructions. I told myself that she was probably testing me. I hoped that she would come to appreciate me over time. However, the situation continued for months. Sometimes I was nagged for being five minutes late in bringing in the laundry, or for having the bath water one inch too high. Before I knew it, I had taken on all the household chores, but my mother-in-law continued to spend her days carefree. 
Honestly, she seemed to have the energy to do the chores herself. I also knew that if this situation continued, it could negatively affect my work. Wanting to avoid that at all costs, I felt it was time to talk to Matt. So, I waited until nightfall. After my mother-in-law went to bed, I confided in Matt about these recent events. Listen, your mother really doesn't like me. I'm going to be exhausted if this continues. But Matt half laughed and replied, No way, that can't be. Mom is a kind person. As long as you don't do anything strange, there shouldn't be any problems. I'm counting on you to make the relationship work. He didn't take my concerns seriously, possibly because in front of Matt, his mother always behaved kindly to me, even suggesting I take a break and have some coffee. However, even understanding the reality of the situation, I knew that my patience would reach its limit if this kind of life continued. I was burdened with household chores during the day and had to do my work through the night. Frankly, my trust in Matt was gradually fading. If the situation didn't improve, I might reach my limit and fall ill. It was then that my mother-in-law made an unbelievable proposal. Kristen, I'll be leaving the house empty for a week during the Easter holiday. I'm counting on you to take care of the household chores while I'm gone. Shocked by this sudden announcement, I asked, what brought this on all of a sudden? Matt suggested it. He said we should go on an overseas trip. He's such a good son. He knows how much I love foreign countries. I can't wait for the Easter holiday in three months. She said excitedly. I was dumbfounded. I hadn't heard anything about such plans from Matt. Moreover, I was to be left behind to house sit all by myself. I realized that I needed to talk to Matt urgently. So once more, I waited until the evening. When I brought it up, Matt said, Ah, uh, mom already told you about it? But aren't you coming with us? We were not on the same page. This meant that my mother-in-law had lied to me. Even though Matt explained things, the thought of going on a trip abroad with my mother-in-law was painful to imagine. I became emotional, wanting him to understand how much I was struggling. I don't want to go. A trip with her would be no fun at all. I strongly exclaimed. However, Matt became angry and retorted fiercely, Kristen, I can't believe you would say something like that. When will you stop acting like a child? I won't allow you to blame my mom. Think about what you've said. I'm looking forward to the trip. I was shocked. He didn't believe a word I had said. Staying in the house had become a painful situation. To make Matt understand that what I was saying was true, I decided to take action the next day. Matt had a day off, and we were having breakfast with the three of us, and I decided to speak directly to my mother-in-law. Mother, is this plan for an overseas trip a way to exclude me? I asked, and she blatantly answered, Humph, I never said that. If you intend to come along, then you should. It would be better, wouldn't it? But Matt intervened, Kristen, you still don't understand the situation? You should apologize to mom. Why are you so aggressive? You're not a child anymore. Nevertheless, what I had stated was based on facts. At this moment, more than ever, I want to make everything clear and assert myself. I want Matt to understand the truth. But before I could argue further, my mother-in-law hurled the most insulting words at me. But you know what, Kristen? It's better if you stay home. You wouldn't understand the appeal of going abroad without ever having gone to high school. Besides, you just laze around at home without working anyway. You don't deserve to go abroad. You think so too, right? She said. I was astonished. I had no idea that she thought I was unemployed. I explained my job when I met her. I'm sure I talked about what I do for work, didn't I? I counted. Then, with disdain, she said, A job? Teleworking? You must be joking. Just playing around with the computer at home. I've had enough of your idleness. You can't possibly be earning an income that way. You're just living off Matt's salary, aren't you? This made me angry, but before I could respond, my mother-in-law added more. For me, it's enough that Matt is here. He speaks Spanish and works at a top hotel. There's no need for someone like you, without an education or job, to use his income. People at the bottom like you should get out of our house. 
She was insulting me to her heart's content. Now Matt must have understood what I was talking about. I convinced myself of this and waited for his reaction, but what he said next was even more unexpected. I can see where mom is coming from. Kristen, you need some time to cool down. As if he was fed up, Matt said that to me. At that moment, my mind was made up. I could no longer stay with them. Even my husband, Matt, sided with his mother and refused to take my side. I was not needed here and even if I was, I no longer wanted to live with these people. My mother-in-law told me to leave, but I confirmed just to be sure. Are you really okay with me leaving? I asked, laughing, she replied, of course. Get out of here, you're a nuisance. So I said, understood, and started preparing to move to a new place. I simply nodded to them and left the house. As I did, my mother-in-law mockingly said, enjoy your pole life in a place that suits you. But they did not yet understand the repercussions that might come from this. About three months had passed since I left the house, and it was almost Easter holiday. After a long period with no contact, I received a call from my mother-in-law. Kristen, I finally got through to you. What on earth happened? She was clearly flustered. I replied calmly, after saying such things to me. You have the nerve to call? She said, I couldn't reach you at all. I thought you changed your number, so I even contacted your parents' house asking for it. I had already informed my parents beforehand that Matt or my mother-in-law might contact them, and if they did, to give them this number. When I asked, is there some problem? My mother-in-law responded with a shaken voice, problem? I've got a mountain of bills coming in. Do something. I didn't know anything about this. She was seeking help. I guess you haven't been paying the utility bills, have you? I calmly replied, but she seemed to have even more serious issues. I thought Matt was handling the finances. I had no idea you were paying for everything. Why didn't you tell me sooner? She asked. It was too late for her to be upset about it, but apparently, Matt had finally told her the truth. In reality, I had leveraged my experience at a travel agency to start my own business which had become an international success, now a company exceeding an annual turnover of $10 million. And to my mother-in-law's surprise, there was also a misunderstanding about Matt's income. Despite working at a renowned hotel, it didn't mean he was highly paid. In fact, he was an ordinary employee with an average income. The hotel had many Spanish-speaking staff. Being able to speak Spanish wasn't considered a special talent. It was impossible for his income to support a family of three. It was a struggle even for him to support himself. Moreover, despite the fact that I was supporting the household, they remained oblivious about it until the notices arrived, which was quite ignorant of them. As I listened to my mother-in-law, an unbelievable truth came to light. The real reason Matt had proposed I live with his mother wasn't to take care of her. In fact, she had been living off the inheritance left by Matt's father, but she had squandered the fortune on a lavish lifestyle, and now her assets were completely gone. In such a state, she had turned to Matt, who she thought was financially stable, for help. However, aware of his modest income and knowing that I was the breadwinner, Matt had ultimately turned to me for assistance. Hearing this story, I realized they were indeed a troubled pair. But the problems didn't end there. Have you taken care of the credit card payments? I asked, to which my mother-in-law suddenly raised her voice. That's what I'm talking about. Both Matt and I have bills piling up. Actually, since I had started living with them, bills from credit card companies had begun arriving in both of their names. The monthly charges continued to rise, and before we knew it, they had ballooned to a significant amount. What luxuries they had indulged in without paying for the living expenses were unclear to me, but Matt's charges were clearly beyond his salary, and my mother-in-law hadn't changed her extravagant ways. Now both were in debt. The total amount exceeded $20,000, which truly shocked me. Even more shocking was that she had said, I thought something like a little debt would be handled by Matt, and Matt also thought, if we were really in trouble, Kristen would sort it out. 
I could hardly conceal my astonishment. They were both so entitled. It's hard to forgive adults who act so irresponsibly. It's not just appalling. It feels downright dangerous. Yet my mother-in-law had the audacity to say, Given the situation, Kristen, you'll find us a solution, right? I refused outright. After the way you treated me, I see no reason to help you now. It seemed Matt was also there, because he suddenly came on the line, insisting, Kristen, you're my wife. It's your duty to take care of us. Find a way to help. We can't make the payments. I had no desire to deal with their shamelessness any longer, but I showed mercy. Will you come to me? If you do, I might be willing to help to some extent. Matt seemed keen on the offer. Yeah, that sounds good. You'll provide a place to live and take care of the money, right? We'll come on over. Where are you now? We'll leave right away. Tell me quickly. Despite his eagerness, I frankly said, of course, if you can make it, that is. I'm in the Bahamas. I have a villa here. Both Matt and my mother-in-law couldn't hide their astonishment. La, what do you mean? Bahamas. We can't possibly go to such a place right now. He said. The situation was tense, but I remained calm. Is that so? But aren't you planning a trip abroad for the Easter holiday? Why not stop by the Bahamas then? Your mother would be pleased, right? By the way, you got my number from my parents. Didn't you realize it was an international one? I also reminded them. Oh, and don't forget, this call is going to be quite expensive. Lung conversations are tough on the wallet. Acting as if I wanted to continue the conversation, I added, if we get divorced, I might reconsider the financial situation for you. Upon hearing this, Matt replied, you're right. Okay, let's get divorced. He probably couldn't stand the burden of debt any longer. I informed him that I would come to hand over the divorce papers when I returned to the US and ended the call. About a week later, I returned to the US, had him fill out the divorce papers, and our separation was finalized smoothly. He had become considerably gaunt, apparently living a harsh life over the past few days. Matt confessed that he had expected me to pay for the overseas trip costs. Hearing this no longer surprised me, but it seems that after the divorce, they had assumed that I would pay their debts. Of course, I had no such intention. What I suggested was that they both cut back on their luxuries and work hard. As I advised, that way, they could eventually repay their debts and maintain a basic standard of living. When Matt heard my answer, he protested, Hey, that's not what you said. You said you'd take care of the debt. I replied with a hint of sarcasm. I did come up with a plan for you to repay your debts on your own. Just follow my advice, and you'll be fine. Good luck. And when you can afford a vacation abroad, you're welcome to visit my villa in the Bahamas. And with that, I left. Since then, they seem to be working tirelessly from early morning until late at night, living life to the fullest. Perhaps this was a necessary lesson for them. It's a replacement for their previously lazy lives. In the meantime, I heard that my old friend, Maya, had settled in the Bahamas, meaning that I was able to be reunited with her after such a long time. After graduating from middle school, she found an international job and, like me, had become a company president. She welcomed her parents into her new home and lives happily together with them. Seeing how things worked out for her, I decided to call my own parents from the US to come and live with me. Now I visit Maya from time to time. We encourage each other, feeling fortunate to be able to care for our parents in a wonderful foreign land, and we continue to work hard in our respective businesses.